CBS News Detroit. Weekdays at 5, 6, and 11, and streaming live. Welcome back. There's a lot more to chat GPT than using it for homework or essays. Our next guest says it can help lawyers be more efficient and even help non lawyers who can't afford to hire one. So joining us now is the founder of the Michael Jafer law firm. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. You are one of the people who is already adapting to this technology and you are in favor of chat GPT. I'm absolutely in favor of it. So I think it's going to increase access to justice. I think it's going to help people tremendously. Um, I have not seen one bad example of ChatGPT as it relates to people hiring lawyers. I've only seen examples in the other way that you know increases access to justice, increases consumer satisfaction. Um, and the attorneys I talk to, they're all in favor of it. I, I can give an example as to why, but I think it's a big, big, big boon to society. Yeah, some people get really nervous when you start talking about this. Uh, they're saying, we're all going to be replaced. If you do a lot of writing in your job, we do a lot of writing here in mm -hmm. the news media. Lawyers do a lot of writing, yeah. a lot of long legalese. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, well, obviously you don't. Do you know anyone who feels like this software may replace your entire profession? I can give you an example that would answer every, all, all of that question. So an example is, so. So I do personal injury cases, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a client called me last week and he was in a trucking accident. He had $27,000 of damage to his truck. He applied to the insurance company. They offered him only $13,000. Now this is a typical story that happens long before ChatGPT. Typically, I would put together a, 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 an analysis. I would have a young lawyer in my office draft me a template demand letter. That would take probably about two weeks and I would send it to the insurance company. What I did was I went out to ChatGPT and I put in the facts and I put in the policy provisions, within 10 seconds, I had an 80 to 90% perfect demand letter without wow. having to use the associate lawyer in my office and I was able to fix the 10 to 20% and send it out. The, the reason that that matters is because now the young attorneys in my office, young attorneys who don't have good skills become obsolete, the owners of law firms become more efficient, but the consumer didn't have to wait two weeks for his letter to go out and he's mm -hmm. able to get his compensation faster. So that's what ChatGPT, in my opinion, will do. It'll make the young lawyers that, at law, law firms more irrelevant. They'll have to open their own law firms and so the consumer will have a lot more options to choose from. Uh, so it's a win-win for the consumer, not so much for the young attorney at the, at the law firm, but that young attorney will have to use ChatGPT and develop his skills and compete in the marketplace, which is kind of what people want anyway. It sounds like it's just removing a lot of busy work, mm -hmm. a lot of tedious work that takes a long time, mm -hmm. but nobody was being extremely efficient with it in the first place, right? Absolutely. So ChatGPT is a big efficiency tool. I've seen people who needed, you know, liability waivers go on to ChatGPT. They couldn't get a hold of an attorney. So they went on to ChatGPT, give me a liability waiver. Now they had a liability waiver that's 80, 90% accurate and then they were able to call a lawyer what do you think about this and fix it they were able to save time money they were able to get access now if you tell gpt you know chat gpt give me legal advice it'll tell you talk, talk to a lawyer yeah so it hasn't gotten to that they probably level had a lawyer design that uh, yeah yeah response. they had a lawyer design that for sure yeah but uh, but yeah it has made people more efficient it has made lawyers more efficient and now just the conversational aspect of chat gpt i've seen people go on to chat gpt and have a conversation and hone in the questions they had for lawyers so when they spoke to a lawyer, they were a lot more educated and knowledgeable than before something like ChatGPT. If you went on Google and you tried to Google a topic to get legal question, mm -hmm. uh, questions answered, you'd be, on, you'd be inundated with ads yeah. for a page, two pages. ChatGPT just gets directly to it, answers your question. If it can't answer your question, It'll tell you I cannot answer this question. Not to mention a lot of if you do just Google legal advice in a lot of cases it's going to be really complicated mm -hmm. filled with jargon that your average person without a law degree does not understand and you can ask chat GPT to explain something to you at a high school reading level or explain it to me in layman's terms uh, but do you see what could potentially go wrong are there anything anything that concerns you with this technology being used in the world of law. 
I liken ChatGPT as when the word processor was invented. Before the word processor was invented, people, in order to, you know, to type up a contract, it would take days, right? The word processor increased it into you know, a few seconds. I think ChatGPT, I can't see a, a way where ChatGPT would hurt the consumer. Look, if you're a consumer and you have a very complicated case and you go onto ChatGPT and you trust every single thing you say, that, that it says, and then you go into a courtroom and you lose the, I mean, there's statute of limitations, right? Some yeah. people have claims. If they solely rely on AI and they miss a claim, well then they've lost more than had they hired a lawyer in the beginning. But if you use it re responsibly, I can't see how it would hurt anybody. I think that this is going to be a net plus for consumers. I think it's going to increase competition among law firms. I've already seen lawyers laying off staff. Wow. And those staff have had to open their own law firms because of ChatGPT. How could that ever hurt a consumer? I can't see, I, I, I can't think, I can't think of an excellent, uh, yeah. an example right now of how this in the aggregate would hurt consumers. Yeah, so manage your expectations and use it responsibly to avoid those limits. And we keep saying that there are these limits and we are going to discuss those uh, a little bit later. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck with all your chat GPT work <laughs> ahead of you. Thank you so much. All right, in a couple of minutes, we'll be joined by the founder of a no-code development software who has a lot to say about all this AI. Stay with us.